This is the Temple Church in the city of London, associated with one of the most controversial groups in the history of Christendom, the Knights Templar. Despite the church being so well maintained that it looks like it's only a few decades old, it was consecrated in 1185. And it has a wild roller coaster of a history because it went from the dissolution of the Knights Templar to the destruction in World War II. The most unique aspect of this church is that if you look up, you see that it is a round church. Half of it is more traditional, down this way. But this half, it's more unique. Round churches are more rare in this area of the world. This is making a direct allusion to the Church of the Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It is the apparent place where Jesus Christ died and was resurrected. In the belief of the Knights Templar, they too would die and be resurrected at the Day of Judgment. And these effigies are here in place of them looking like they were in their early 30s because that's the same time that Jesus Christ died. They were not necessarily 33 years old when they actually died. But here, they believe that these effigies will become real life once again at the Day of Judgment. Now these effigies are of William Marshall and his son. William Marshall is a very important figure in English history. Because in 1215 of January, King John was cooped up here in the temple church. People were pissed off, especially the barons of England. King John was abusing his power, spending exorbitant amounts of money on his own earthly pleasures. He was also seizing land and charging way too much in taxes. He was exceeding his own power and disobeying the law. So the barons managed to crack into the defensive of King John here in the city of London. They came right in here and they pushed them, negotiated, and maybe even forcefully encouraged him to sign the Magna Carta, which was a document that ended up changing English history. 1215 would change world history as we know it because the Magna Carta was one of the first major Bill of Rights in the Western world. This would also set up a balance of power between the monarchy, or later on the government, and the people. Thomas Jefferson in America was directly inspired by this. So who are the Knights Templars? They were warrior monks who fought in the Crusades helped conquer a lot of the lands of Jerusalem and further up here we see in Tripoli and Antioch. The Knights Templar were one of the most successful crusaders, setting up a huge system of castles, houses, and defensive structures, not only in the east, but also here in the west. Here we have another effigy. This is a member of the Ross family. And right over here, the inspirations for the structure, we got the Temple Mount, in Jerusalem, but we also have the Holy Sepulchre. Now these effigies were heavily damaged in World War II. May 1941, one of the worst nights of the Blitz and the Germans unleashed bombs, destroying many of the buildings. The Temple Church was one of its casualties. Those bombs not only destroyed the church, but also destroyed these effigies. Extensive restoration work was done. And here we have an effigy of King John. The original one lies in Worcester Cathedral, but this one, um, he's the guy who signed the Magna Carta, luckily. So what happened to the Knights Templar? Well, it was quite a drama. So here we're in the upper level of the rounded church. Lots of symbolism on the tiling. King of France was pissed off due to various disagreements in the debts he had to repay to the Knights Templar and also to the power that they were accumulating. The Knights Templar went from warriors to bankers. This was a deadly combination because you do not want your bank to have an army. This would be very alarming in the modern day. Rounded up all the Knights Templars and burned them at the stake, or worse, tortured for days until they were disemboweled and they were quickly dissolved a few years later and by the 1300s they were no more.
I've shown you most of the church. Let's go outside and we can see how the structure looks like. The admission was only five pounds, uh, which is a pretty good price uh, for a church that is steeped in so much history, I highly do recommend going to it. So this is the Temple Bar area. Many of the other buildings are also associated with the Knights Templar, but in recent modern history, they're associated with the law system. Here's the outside of the Temple Church that looks more like a fortification than it does a church. Uh, not only were they trying to replicate the Church of the Sepulcher, and the reason they were doing that was to associate with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, believing that if they build it here, in its imitation, the Knights Templar themselves would be resurrected. So they had a whole lot of power here in London and in the rest of the Western world. Thick, thick walls. So you could just imagine King John being cooped up here for weeks until they finally broke through. This, as you probably already know, has been featured in films like The Da Vinci Code. They speculate that the Knights Templar knew the true origins of Jesus Christ, the bloodline that followed him. But Jesus was single, wasn't he? Well, according to Dan Brown's novel, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ might have been married to Mary Magdalene. They apparently also had the Holy Grail as well. Was that the key to their power? Or was it merely a financial banking empire that they set up? Or was it a combination of both? Who knows? Here from Temple Church, I'm Ariel, this is Urbanus. Thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring.